this week on Manor and Maker, we are joined by a fabulous group of people for a gourmet weekend. Stuart shows them how to cook in the kitchen, and we all enjoy wonderful meals and a good glass of wine. Bonjour, good morning. We are here at the market in Exido. This happens every Thursday morning. This is my second time here, so I've already kind of gotten to know a few of the vendors, especially that flirty one over there. He oh, he's flirty, get, yeah. He's very flirty. Yeah, yeah. He was trying real hard, but it was a bit too early for Piedmont d'Espelette. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got everything we need for the first couple of days for yeah. the culinary weekend. I'm so excited, except that's, the fishmonger. And that's oh, yeah, yeah. Pig. When she says everything, yeah. we and, got everything. And Sarah's yeah. holding about three bushels of yeah. strawberries <laughs> and raspberries. Um, yeah. But yeah, now we just have to find fish because, ironically, the fishmonger yeah. thought it was too wet to come today. Yeah, <laughs> I, that is a lot of irony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a big storm here last night. Yeah, so huge. Yeah. yeah, we're all doing okay running on like nosebleed. But yeah, yeah. So we've oh, got to cool. go off to find salmon and. Then we're done. And we're good. And champagne, of course. And champagne. Yes. Yeah. Who could ever forget? Yeah. Tara. All right. <laughs> Off let's, we go. let's bob along. <laughs> All right. Can we guess what this is? Uh, I can't talk for drooling, I'm sorry. Well, we were talking about mutton all through lunch after we did the class today. So we're not actually doing mutton. We'll probably do that in a few weeks. This is lamb over potatoes. I like to cook it or roast the lamb over potatoes because then all the wonderful drippings come oh, yeah. out over yeah. the potatoes. So we got a nice drizzle bath and olive oil, garlic, rosemary from the garden. The Salt, smell. Pepper. I know. It already smells good. Like yeah. I could already eat this. Yeah. I mean, don't, <laughs> but you could. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to food safety wise. Food safety definitely wise. No, yeah, no. I mean, yeah, if you're on yeah. your own, try it. And then my, <laughs> I have a little secret. You can see that little one right there yeah. poking out, but secret ingredient to most cooking, at least my cooking and a few other chefs, anchovies. Oh. I studded this girl with anchovies. Shut the or front more, door. Whatever it is. All right. Sneak, sneak fish attack. Sneaking, I'm, a, I'm up sneaking, for those. No yeah. one's allergic to fish here. Yeah, no, we're exactly. Having, yeah. We're having free rate, carte blanche on everything. Awesome. And that looks haven't... stunning, chef. I am very excited. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Let me present to you. Now, she oh, took a while. My word. Took a while. She was a big girl. Oh, the butcher she's a big warned girl. me that. Oh, look at her. The smell. It's a good thing there isn't smell of vision because people would be drooling on their screens. I tell you, I so, wish there was yeah. a scratch and sniff option <laughs> for all of y'all. But oh, she's gonna be beautiful. She that just came gorgeous. out. She hit perfect temperature. Very important to hit that. And now she's going to rest. Okay. For a bit. Ta-da. Um, and yeah, and then we will start everyone off with. Um, a soup of, what did I put in the soup? So, oh, <laughs> I know this. What did I put in the soup? Um, so it's a leek and <gasps> spring pea soup mm. that I then pureed. And I put a couple of broccoli florets. Okay. One for health, why not? And two, I find that it's really beneficial with kind of adding like a bit of alkaline okay. flavor to it because both peas and leeks are very sweet. Okay. So it just kind of zhuzhes it up with a different kind of alternative flavor. Oh. Lots of shallots. Oh, and then of course I deglazed it with white wine. We were talking about that in class earlier today. So we've got somebody new on the front porch. <laughs> yep. Charlie has opinions. Charlie's got opinions on this. Sorry, girlfriend. Yeah. Um, so we'll do that. And then for our side, we have courgette or zucchini for my yep. American friends. So we have a courgette, yellow bell pepper, and then harissa and honey sauce. Oh my That's, word. Um, yeah. And, oh, and green olives. Yeah, I threw that in there. So oh, it should be my word. lots of flavors. We play around here at Manor and Maker. So. I am very excited. <laughs> over here, box number two, we have roast potatoes and lamb uh, and a lamb roast. This is interesting. This is the rump of a lamb, which is really common in France. I don't know about where y'all are from in the States. It's generally the lamb shoulder that we use predominantly. But this is our, this is our lamb, a lamb rump, especially after I talk about mutton today. So um, just marinated very simple in rosemary and herbs directly from the garden, a lot of garlic. And then uh, one of my little secret favorites for enhancing lamb and giving it just a little bit more flavor is you poke holes into it and shove a little tiny anchovy inside, mm. just to give it a little bit more of a, mm. of a flavor. Mm. I'm on camera. <laughs> so I hope you all enjoy. I'm gonna bring in, I also have two cold yogurt sauces 
um, that are done in cumin and a little bit of cayenne pepper and some mint from the garden. So. Oh, fantastic. So, enjoy. Bye bye, Becky. Chef shopping away in the market today. What was your name? Very excited. We're making coca vin tonight. Oh. So these beautiful. Look at these gorgeous champignons. That's Francais for mushrooms. Stunning. <laughs> so the thing with mushrooms, as you can see, they're quite they're quite dirty. Also, biggest rule in France: never touch anyone's produce. Like if you're at the market, only do that. Right. Do you know that? but you always just take a wet paper towel and just lightly clean them off. You never want to get the mushroom completely soaking wet because then it's going to take all the moisture out. And all right, yeah. good to know. Okay, so one of our wonderful guests, Knock here, has found some mushrooms just in the park of where we parked. Bolitos. Summer bolitos. Fancy mushrooms, yeah? Fantastic. And they're edible. Yeah, the French don't eat it because they're too proud to sell Okay. The young one is still delicious. Yeah. Fantastic. That is so cool. Well, there you go. So, um, I need help cleaning the mushrooms from everyone. You can see we have a lot of mushrooms. We don't have to use these all. Um, but the lady was so super nice, and I asked for a kilo, and I think she gave me a little bit more than that, but that's okay. Can, um, I, can I interrupt to ask a question? Yes. Because I've seen places where they make a fuss about the fact that they've still got the bottom of the mushrooms on, like basically the little mm -hmm. fawn thing. Do you know anything about that? Do you mean people who make a fuss that they're on don't like it or that love it? No, that love it. That, yeah. Like they're sold specifically with the, the bottom bottom still on. Well, actually, they do here. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The way, the way it's a pay, you pay more for that. Yes. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why do I pay more for that? Yeah. Oh, okay. I eat, I eat that one oh, enough. Oh, okay. All right. So what we're going to do here, um, we're going to fill this bowl with water. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Ooh, I'm ravenous right now. I can break up the stainless steel for stock. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's Same. a good idea. Yeah. You yeah. Just yeah. It comes right now. So the best way to clean a mushroom, at least this is how I was taught, ironically, all the mushrooms grow from water. You're not supposed to get them yeah. wet. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you can either take a brush or you can take a damp paper towel and just very gently. And you never, so my argument to chef at Le Cordon Bleu when they were saying this, I was like, but they sit in the rain, like they're, they're getting rain done. He's like, yes, but never this way. So yeah. as long as they so don't get wet, do up, the grill and dunk them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So sometimes I see, you know, you go to people's homes and there's just a ton of mushrooms floating in a sink full of water. Oh, you just slime. go like, oh, I don't no. want to eat that later. But to each their own. So if we want to just pop them and it's okay if they rip. And just save that in there, and then here's the bowl to put the other ones, and then we can slice some of them if somebody wants to do that. I quite like with mushrooms, I just, I don't know, I always slice. like this. Yeah, I, like this yeah, I prefer corn mushrooms. Which way do you want to slice them? Especially in both bourguignon. I just think it's prettier. Just break it. Mm -hmm. I, just, I think it's prettier. It's Good less flavor. work. Yeah, more flavor. Ladies, this was the final com compound. All I did was add it in, added in those bacon mushrooms. So they're here. You'll see this is a braising, a technique called braising. So the meat just quite literally falls off of the bone of the chicken. So be careful when plating, but it's okay. delicious and melts in your mouth. Then we also have some carrots glazed in honey, cumin, ginger, a few other things, a lot of butter, because why not? 
And then some beets with mint and feta and the shallot dressing that you will need earlier. Fabulous. Thank you. Bon appetit, chefs. Chefs, thank you. Well done, indeed. Welcome to the Wine Cab. Uh, this is right below the kitchen uh, in Saint Germain de Pre. And uh, if you guys had seen our video uh, from a couple of weeks ago of us going and touring the Bordeaux growing region, we did purchase quite a bit of wine, as you can see. So I'm going to try and fill all these racks with the lovely libations that we have bought from the different distilleries. Sorry, wineries. Super excited about this, and I'll show you when it's done. I've emptied all of the boxes, including the beautiful wooden ones that came from Chateau de Brassac. And now we have a wine cab. Look at that, isn't that a beautiful sight? We now have a lovely selection of wines to offer our guests and to enjoy. And I wanted to say thank you so much to my parents because they very kindly helped us um, to stack this cab with some fantastic wines. And of course, a massive thanks to uh, Stephanie as well for uh, taking us on the tour in Bordeaux and uh, making sure that we got the right selection of wines. Looking forward to enjoying them with friends. I'm trying to pretend I'm not alarmed everyone, but this is our back gate and this is the pile they'll be setting on fire tonight. Um, I think we have a first rule of Chateau problem right now. <laughs> we're a little bit worried. We've got guests, um, so either we're going to be smoked out or, heaven for fun, I'm just going to knock on that big pile of wood of what the alternative might be. It's crazy, but the Batang tournament is on. People are in. Um, it's a beautiful day, and uh, we'll see what tonight brings. Well, it's an absolutely gorgeous evening. Just getting ready for the fire. The pile hasn't gotten any bigger, thank goodness. Let's go. Well, there's the big old fence happening down here. The meal. scared. I'm standing beside our front gate right now. Our front gate. And there is just a giant wall of flame that's throwing embers up into the sky and drifting over our roof. And I'm sure it's fine. The mayor's assured us there's a fire safety plan. This is, this is scary.
obviously we're having a bit of fun this evening and you know the fire is exciting and all but we do want to you know just spare a thought for for all of our canadian friends who unfortunately are dealing with much much worse situations when it comes to fire um our hearts go out to you guys um i hope everybody you know is doing all right and you know things get under control really quickly um yeah sending our love your way Welcome everyone to the morning after, the night before, um, where this morning's breakfast will be lightly smoked everything. As you can see, the fire is still smoldering, but I do notice now that they did have a big tanker truck at the ready, or something resembling that, so that's good. And this is the remains of the day. Let's go get some stuff from the boulangerie. This was the nice little setup they had for their seven euro supper last night, which I think was quite a fair deal. Um, and in case anyone's wondering just, you know, how close the boulangerie is. Uh, so there you can see the smoke from the fire. And it's that building you can see just over the rise there. That's the boulangerie where we're going. So we just go down around what is effectively the bar for <laughs> the fats. It's the the outbuilding storage for the commune. And we go around to the mayor's office and where they have the little bar set up. And then just around the corner to the peacocks and the boulangerie. When I came down here yesterday to pick up the croissant and the uh, chocolatine, or pain au chocolat, uh, they were still warm. Voila. Is that some Madame Falco? It's Madame Falco. <laughs> you fait le croissant pour le matin et le chocolatine. Voilà, six croissants. Je vous remercie parce que les invités sont très heureux, les croissants et des choses comme ça. Merci, Merci beaucoup. Merci à vous. <laughs> I don't think it gets much fresher than this. I have two pains, I have a bunch of croissants, and that's the boulangerie. So there's the delivery. It's not too bad.